So when it comes to editing a photograph in black and white, it's not just simply a case of desaturating all the colors, whether you're using Photoshop or even Lightroom, which I'll show you. Um, there are different ways that you can still affect the colors after you've effectively desaturated or looks like you've desaturated the photo. So I'm going to start off with this um, really nice kind of natural landscape photograph here with this leading line through this forest. And I just wanted to show you the natural way that a lot of photographers um, or a new photographers, let's say, kind of go to desaturate an image in Photoshop. We've been using something like the hue and saturation tool. So you can find that through your image and then adjustment panel and then the hue and saturation. So the natural thing and which is no bad thing is just to desaturate desaturate the image like that so it's taken out all the colors but what that kind of leaves us with and it's not in every situation but certainly in this moment is quite a flat image we've got some nice tones around the trees and these kind of pale colors and these lighter uh, grays and whites in the background but overall the image is pretty flat so as opposed to actually using that simple desaturation method it's worth exploring a couple of little alternatives so Let's go back to where we were before and using the same panel again, here we go image adjustments. And then if you look for the dedicated black and white option within Photoshop, this is going to be really useful. Now straight away, when we click on it, it gives us a preview of the uh, default desaturation. Now we can change that preset that we've got here in a drop down list. We've got a number of different looks. Underneath that, we also then have access to individual color channels, because even though we've desaturated the photograph, the actual colors still exist within the file itself. And that then gives us the opportunity to tweak those colors based upon the original colors that were in the photo. So let me just show you. If we have a look through these presets. Now, some of these may be absolutely horrendous. Some may be really, really useful. So we'll just click on them and go through them one at a time. So we've got a blue filter. We've got a darker one, a green one. So again, say some will look quite nice. It depends on the effect that you're trying to achieve. Some, as I said, though, will look horrendous. Um, but again, you can still customize and using the actual um, sliders underneath each preset um, just to maybe kind of perfect it a little bit further and get it a little bit more exactly how you'd like. So say some may look quite natural. Some may look a little bit more dramatic, it really depends, but I actually quite like that maximum white. It's had a lot of lighter tones at the top there. It still gives me that quite natural light feeling. But as I said, we can still tweak it a bit further. We can move the sliders up and down. Now, some may not have a massive effect or any effect at all on the image. Um, that's simply because those colors weren't really in abundance in the original. Now, if we remember the original, if we click off the preview tab, it's lots of greens, yellows, maybe some reds and browns down on the floor here, but primarily the greens and the yellows, which means moving the green and the yellow slider will probably have the biggest effect on the actual uh, black and white overall. So sometimes you may need to lift off the mouse a little bit just to see the effect. So we've lifted it up right there. So all those yellow tones are really bright now. But we can move it down a little bit further, make it a lot darker. Again, it's just finding a happy halfway house for yourself in terms of the styling of the image. So I think we're quite nice as we are there. You can move some other ones and again, just to check, just to check that it has no effect on it. The blues, the magentas tend not to, unless there's really a lot of sky. So I'm going to keep that there. But what I am also going to do is make a duplicate of this image just so we can actually see how much effect it's had. Now, if I go back to the very original, so we've got a very original and what we've just tweaked now. And I'm also going to get the standard uh, hue and saturation tool and just desaturate the image so we can compare how black and white can look. So this is two images, but edited in a different way. We're not even touching the levels of contrast or, or exposure. It purely is the original color, uh, color pixels within the original image. So, it's just really a useful benefit to look at that there is more options when it comes to desaturating a photograph than just whacking the slider right down to the left hand side. So certainly worth having a look a bit further when using Photoshop for black and white editing.